there is so much that is packed into just two lines in the Apostles' Creed. Conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. We need to look a little farther afield at a bigger idea that the Incarnation hints at, especially in St. John's Gospel. He writes in chapter 1 that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But he doesn't stop there. A little later, he says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word of God became incarnate, became man, and dwelt among us. Dwelt is an odd word choice there. Tabernacled is what St. John says. The word tabernacled among us. And that opens our eyes to a whole new idea. Jesus is the tabernacle, the tent of God's presence that guided the Israelites through the wilderness to safety in the place that God had promised for them. And Jesus is the temple, the place where the all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world happens. He embodies both the holy place of God's presence and the sacrifice that restores God's people. It gives you a whole new appreciation for Jesus saying in in chapter 2 of of St. John's Gospel, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And when he says to the Samaritan woman in chapter 4 that there won't be a physical temple on a certain mountain where you go to worship, but rather you will be in God's presence wherever the faithful gather in spirit and in truth. That's why there's no temple in Jerusalem now, or will there ever be again in this life, because Jesus himself became the temple in his body. He became the place where God is present among his people. He became the physical tabernacle that wandered this earth and drew his people to it. And then led them on the way to the promised land, the new creation where we will all dwell on the last day. Until then, the enfleshed Jesus, the tabernacled Christ, is present in spirit and truth for you upon the altar. In bread become body and wine become blood and also in the preached and read word. Jesus tabernacles among you to give you his gifts every time you gather together. His fleshly presence here for you until he comes again to lead you to his eternal presence of the new creation for all of eternity. We are the pro-life generation. That's what today's high school and university students are calling themselves. Why are youth for life? Lutherans for Life's Why for Life community helps answer the question. Why for Life engages and equips today's learners to be tomorrow's leaders through education, networking, and service. Learn more about bringing Why for Life to your church and school at whyforlife.org. That's the letter Y, the number four, L-I-F-E dot org.